Commander. For the people. By the people. News First Newsline with Faraz Shalkutali. And very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. And my guest this evening is um, <coughs> a former uh, State Minister of Agriculture, um, Dr. Hema Kumara Nanyakara. Now then, uh, we're, uh, we're having Dr. Nanyakara on the program because we are told and uh, certainly more and more people are becoming aware of a looming food crisis. That's right. You heard it right. Not a dollar crisis, which we are in now, but a looming food crisis. Let's ask the right question, shall we? Uh, very good evening to you, Dr. Hema Kumar. Good Thank evening. You. Now then, are we really in? What's, what's really happening here? <clears throat> very interesting question. We are heading for a big massive food crisis some time back maybe a year or so I came here and I predicted this absolutely you did with all authentic information the country was heading at that time I told a massive food crisis and it'll end in food rights so we are coming into that before coming to the subject proper, mm. let me come out with a small preamble to our discussion. Yes. Ours is a country which is an island with a highly fertile soil, two main seasons, Yala and Maha cultivation seasons, and southwest and northeast monsoons come during these cultivation seasons. And this timely rainfall help us to get rain fed cultivation going and also to fill our tanks, water tanks. Mm. Thanks to ancient Singhala kings they built these water wevers or irrigation tanks mm. and the network of canals are the feeders of life blood to crops mm. that is irrigation water. Now we have all these factors which are superb for crop and animal production. Mm. What has gone wrong? Farmers are really competent in cultivation, producing crops and producing li having livestock production. What has gone wrong? Rulers in this country have taken wrong decisions to stop importation of chemical fertilizers and other agrochemicals. Now we have faced a big crisis. Farmers, though they know the art of production, the factors of production are not coming and they cannot produce any crops, any food. May I first give a small note on mm. the imports? Mm. Uh, <coughs> the imports of certain items, essential food items in this country. Rice imports, I have taken a few uh, samples from imports. Yeah. These are these are from uh, custom reports. Okay. Uh, in 19, uh, sorry, in 2020. Yeah. Sri Lanka imported rice worth of 10 million rupees. Rupees. In, rupees. In 2021, after the fertilizer ban and agrochemical ban, we Im had to import rice worth of 75 million rupees. Is that to do with the fact that the dollar uh, rate? No, this is the dollar was not the, the dollar fluctuation was not that bad at that time. Mm. But it was purely due to the shortage of rice in the country and the government had to import. Right. And I will take one month that's in 2015 December I was able to get the information mm -hmm big onions or Bombay onions. Mm. We have stopped calling it Bombay onions anymore. Yes. After why? The JVP didn't want any Indian products to come to Sri Lanka at that time. So they say now it's Bilu. No, they called it Loku Ludo. Okay. Big onions. Okay. <laughs> then uh, in 2015 December, yeah. in only in that month, mm. we imported 28,000 odd kilos from Egypt, from India, one point uh, one million sixteen thousand kilos of Bombay onions 
within a period of one month. And the value of this was uh, US dollars 74,000 approximately. Mm. When we go to the other thing, potatoes, uh, in the month of December 2015, from China we imported 191 uh, 200 and 200 kilos of potatoes for mm. consumption, mm. not seed potatoes for farming, mm. this for consumption, human consumption, it valued something like US dollars 48,000 approximately. Mm. This within one month, for one month. Then red lentils, mm. Ratu Paripu or Mysore Paripu we call yeah. it. In the month of 2015 December only, we imported from Australia mm. 1.6 million kilograms of dal or red lentils value was 1.4 million US dollars these figures were given for the importations for one month just a month yeah just a month so we can imagine how much money has been draining out from this country for the for different types of food that we could grow here the only Crop yeah. that we cannot grow possibly grow here is Mysore Dal or Ratuparipu. Mm -hmm. That is due to a pest attack called a pest called Maruka testulalis. The attack on red uh, Mysore Dal or tur, uh, Mysore Dal or red, uh, red lentils is so much. Mm. You have to drench the fields with insecticides. Due to that, Sri Lanka has ta taken another turn to grow Tur Dal, Toraparipu, or Lanka Paripu, there was another uh, variety which was bred in Sri Lanka, which is suitable for Sri Lanka. Right. Under the Mahakananda Rabha irrigation project, some time back, we grew easily three to four thousand hectares of uh, Lanka Paripu. What's happened now? All those things are neglected. Even the Ministry of Agriculture yeah. is in dire straits. Now, presently and a few years before. They don't know what's going on. The Department of Agriculture is sleeping, sleepy and droopy. I won't blame the officials there. Mm. Because the ministry take decisions and when you specially take the seed and planting material division of the Department of Agriculture, they were able to produce seed and planting material for the entire country. Now, quietly, very happily, they have passed on the responsibility to seed importing companies. Mm. I'm not against private sector companies. <coughs> they should import seeds. Yeah. But the, the duty of the Department of Agriculture to produce seed and planting material, they have just forgotten about it. They produce only a very little. Even today, there is a shortage of uh, seeds and planting material. Yes, we, we know that uh, from uh, our own uh, research and data uh, that uh, the farmers have not really bought enough of seeds. And uh, that's uh, absolutely, you, it would appear for a farmer that that would be rather suicidal. But when they have no, uh, no confidence that they will have a proper output, then it's it they may be taking the view that it's good uh, it's uh, good money being thrown off to bad exactly. a and therefore they and, and therefore we are going to be experiencing this shortfall um, I mean I, I'm told uh, 6,000 metric tons per day in Sri Lanka that's the amount of rice consumption right um, flour earlier was 3,500 metric tons but after all this uh, crisis that's going on uh, that is now redu uh, reduced to 2,500 metric tons. Right. Ukraine and Russia do play a part. Uh, you know, they produce about 25% of the global wheat. The, uh, due to the war and the fertilizer price increase, um, the price of flour has escalated. Previously, a metric ton of wheat was, I think, uh, $210. Now it's about 480 So suppliers do not have dollars to import into Sri Lanka. So isn't this food crisis also really in a um, strange sort of way related to the dollar crisis it's it's partly due to that mm. the balance is due to low production within the country how can you produce crops 
we have you used nowadays we use hybrids yeah hybrid <coughs> seeds they the, these varieties have been bred to have very high responsiveness to chemical fertilizer very high responsiveness to agrochemicals mm. and micro irrigation you know as you and i know in 1960s a scientist called a plant breeder called norman bullog bred these new hybrid varieties mm. so without uh, chemical fertilizers and agrochemicals you cannot grow this variety these what happened during from 2021 yellow season the government took a decision to ban all chemical fertilizers and agrochemicals this is finally what happened to our agriculture our production went to rock bottoms and i predicted in one of your uh, yes, one of the did, discussions indeed. with you the crop loss would be somewhere between 40 to 70% which have become true today so uh, you know all these shortages now uh, within a month even perhaps even a month and i don't want to be sensationalist you if you disagree you can say that but uh, this flour will also become a crisis situation and then people like biscuit manufacturers will be challenged their production will be challenged meaning that sri lanka you know we may not even be able to buy a local biscuit we can't buy imported anyway because it's banned we will not have biscuits we will not have bread we will not have buns we will not have even a kimbula bun is for us to eat my god so that's <laughs> like a favorite <laughs> but my doctor's not listening so that's all right you know um but honestly and then palm oil on the one side the president has banned the uh, they want to phase out um, production or cultivation of palm um. and you can't import on the other side so the same story sugar even though they've got uh, these so called henchayas uh, in the sugar uh, business but we will soon not have that and also where as you said before lentils so truly we are also apart from the dollar crisis we will soon be in a food crisis so the question dr hema kumar anania kare is where does the buck stop who took this decision we all believe that it was president gotabi rajapaksa should president gotabi rajapaksa do the right thing and acknowledge that he is out of his depth and he has unfortunately failed including the people who voted him in and should go home would you agree with those sentiments or would you just say that i'm being biased no let me say this president gotabe rajapaksa is responsible for taking this foolish irresponsible decision he was gullible there was a person a medical doctor who was trying to advise him on agriculture the fellow is not to be seen yes or heard <laughs> no heard and uh, there was another uh, dental surgeon who didn't know he didn't have a knowledge of iota even on agriculture advised the president they of course came for talk shows with me and trying to show that they are great agriculturists but they proved themselves to be otherwise and also there was a monk who was advising uh president rajapaksa on organic agriculture president rajapaksa was so is so immature in politics and i don't know whether he had common sense when these people came and said stop immediately all agrochemicals and agro fertilizers to take their word as gospel he stopped everything and we faced this crisis today today the farmers are unable to have their forget about three meals even one square meal a day due to the bad decision making of president rajapaksa gotabe rajapaksa so people say he should go but it doesn't look that he is going home uh, yet what we say these are country and we have to save this country now we'll have to discuss about the solutions if gotabe raj president gotabe rajapaksa or one of his media men if they are listening to this they could take it back to uh, the president and discuss with the president but do you think that they are frightened because we appear to have a president who doesn't want to listen 
No, he doesn't want to listen. But when from shortage of food to food rights start, it will be worse than the golf face Aragale. Therefore, he better listen to this. Not to me, but to other agricultural experts. There are so many professors, doctors. But, you know, uh, Dr. Nanakare, I, I must say to, this to you. The Rajapaksas are from a farming background, or they owned farms that were, you know, they were the landed sort of gentry, if you like. And they have, they have cultivations. All President Gotabe ought to have done should have phoned his eldest brother and asked him uh, what he thought of this whole business. Because I'm sure that his eldest brother would have pointed out, as farmer, that you can't do it overnight. You can do it over a period of time, perhaps. But the fundamental basic, I was told, I don't know, I mean, you, you are the expert on this. I was told that to convert a plot of land, say this bit of land, from chemical to organic, you need to lay it alone, leave it alone for at least three years You're and right. then start. You're right. So surely this, this bit could have been told to him by his own brother, had he inquired. Um, I don't know whether they discuss these things, but this common sense. There are so many advisors, experts, mm. whom he could have tapped from the universities and maybe the private sector or retired people. Oh, I don't know. He didn't listen to any of these people. He didn't contact. He didn't listen to anybody. But let's listen to the headline news from uh, uh, Primetime News team at News First. And we'll be back on the other side. All right. Thank you. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Amanda, for the people, by the people. A brand new year, a year of hope, a year of aspirations and people looking for inspiration. Our software engineers, our uh, IT expertise are, I mean, not seconding to anyone. A proper investigation led by the CID, this will be swept under the carpet. Understanding about the stock market, the fundamentals, the economy, that is very important. Entire ownership of this reclaimed land, as well as the governance of Port City, are all under the government of Sri Lanka. No planet, no people, no business. Yes. And this is the simple thing about Biznomics. Your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. Biznomics. Saturday and Sunday at 5 p.m. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Dr. Hemakumara Nanayakara, one-time State Minister of Agriculture, and he's right here. I'll start off with a question sent in by one of our viewers. Thank you very much for the several questions in any event. Will Ranil Vikramasinghe be able to save Sri Lanka from starvation that may occur in the future, or is there a solution to the crisis we are facing? Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe is trying his level best. Hmm. I'm not a fan of Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe, but yet I have to confess he's trying his level best. Hmm. So far, within these few days, he has proved himself that he's positively taking a good approach to curtail the problems, uh, serious problems that we have been uh, facing. But, sorry, so, go on. To getting dollars is a million dollar question mm. but yet he's trying and he has been successful to a certain extent number two is the solution solution should be we have to have some credit line from some place i know middle eastern countries produce a lot of chemical fertilizers and vietnam also produces to a certain extent india i don't know whether india is able to give us because they also have a 
uh, type of kind of a food uh, crisis mm. to a certain not to the degree that we do have it here from these fertilizer producing countries we will have to have credit lines or find some dollars i don't know where to find the dollars from mm. we will have to definitely import uh, chemical fertilizers and other pesticides and other agrochemicals right and also we, the seeds are in short supply we must allow the seed companies to import seed but these seeds should be transfer types meaning meaning now the seeds which are bred to be good in England may not be suitable for us. Ah. It has to be bred for tropical countries, Transwell types. Even American Northrop, and, uh, Northrop King Company, they breed Transwell types. So we have to get Transwell types of be, uh, uh, seeds and we can be safer if we import seed material, seed and planting material from countries like India, maybe Pakistan, Bangladesh, but Vietnam. where are the dollars coming from? That is a problem. I think Mr. Anil Vikramasinghe is trying his level best to find dollars. He but isn't, you know, I mean, in all due fairness, um, I know this program title is A Food cri Crisis is Looming, is Imminent, but I have to ask you this question because it's relevant. Mr. Vikramasinghe is a one-man band. He's actually always been a one-man band, but now he's really a one-man band. And he is at the whim and fancy of the principal puppeteer, who has to be Basil Raj Baxa, because he controls the SLPP. So if he doesn't play or dance to the tune, then, you know, um, he, he isn't going anywhere. So how does that play in this quest to solve the pro problem? I personally don't think Ra Mr. Ranil Vikram, is going, uh, Vikram Singh is going to be a puppet in the hand of Basil Rajapaksa. Mm. Basil Rajapaksa has played his role, failed over and over again. Now, of course, SLPP is in the hands of Basil Raj Rajapaksa, but now we see a clear division in the SLPP. Mm. Very soon, it'll surface. Mm. Basil may be having some people in his hand or on his side, but he cannot, as far as I know, he cannot make Ranil a puppet, Miss Ranil Vikram Singh a, a puppet. Mm. I think he's playing a bigger role. He is working with uh, Gotabe Rajapaks. I don't agree with Gotabe. I don't agree with Ranil Vikram Singh. That's a different story. Mm. But at present, if Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh didn't come forward mm. to accept the uh, prime ministership, this country would have ended up in the hands of the military. That would have been the Hobson's choice. There was no other person. There were other people who were to come and the conditions were there. There were other prob interwoven problems. Conditions were not met by the President Rajapaksa. Mm. But anyway, if Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh didn't come forward, you and I would have been having this, whatever the interview or the program, mm. under a military government. Uh, I, I, uh, I am absolutely flabbergasted. Uh, but in that, in that ambience, let me just read this out. I'm watching your program. Thank you. Uh, why didn't Gota listen to others on fertilizer? Simple answer is Gota has OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, coupled with power unlimited. This was, you know, let's take it as a, a sort of a figure of expression, you know, tongue in cheek even. But the principal question, the gist of the question is, that he has unlimited power and he doesn't listen or he's ill-advised whichever way the bottom line is that the people of the country are in this situation how quick should we be acting now to get this going again 62 percent of our population as i keep continuing to say of the working population are daily waged <clears throat> adding something to the person who has asked a question or yeah. made a statement. May I explain about President Gotabe Rajapaksa in two words? Please. Arrogance and ignorance. 
arrogance and ignorance. With these two words, the whole uh, picture could be seen by the listeners or the people who are watching this program. How so arrogance and ignorance. Ignorance. Yes. But, Mr. Hem Dr. Hemakumar Kara, how on earth did he deliver when he was Defence Secretary? That was a combined effort. No single person can take uh, the credit for that. Of course, we had thousands of troops. Thousands of troops. Uh, people like Sarat Fonseca, then uh, Karan Nagoda, then uh, Air Force Commander Gunatil uh, Roshan, I think yes, Gunatilaka, yes. and so many. And Jayampati, Jayanta Vikramaratna, the IGP then. And, and the now retired uh, Shavendra Silva. Shavendra Silva, Prime Minister himself, Mahindra Rajapaksa, and Gotabe was one of them in the team. And Gotabe knew military affairs. He doesn't know how to run a country. Military affairs, of course, he was competent. He was a lieutenant colonel or uh, some, uh, he was in some He was in the rank. army. Yeah, he was in the army. And he held a high rank. Shall we colonel. not forget Rani Vikramasinghe's role in bringing Corona over from the Eastern Command? <sighs> I think that was a very, very salient point, highly salient point, very important role he played. But uh, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe didn't want to openly accept that he was instrumental in getting Karuna. Hmm. I don't know the reason why he didn't want to openly accept it. But as far as I know, I was in the UNP at that time, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe was the person who was fully instrumental and responsible for take, breaking Karuna from the LTT. And he was the Eastern Commander? He was the Eastern Commander. So, <coughs> Dr. Nanekara, what should people do? Should they be listening to this program and rushing to the shops and buying all, all the rice and the flour? I think. And the biscuits? I think biscuits, we are more worried about biscuits, I think, than mm. <laughs> uh, mm. rice. My size. <laughs> no, people should start cultivating. Right. Home gardens, whatever the bits and pieces of lands that they have in their villages, urban agriculture, balcony agriculture, all these things should come. Mm. I heard recently one of the ministers said, I think the Minister of Agriculture said, that they are going to take over the lands which are uncultivated. I want to tell him, please first get the government farms fully cultivated and first get the barren lands cultivated which are belonging to Mahavali. Then talk about the lands of the private land. Yes, because you know, in my suspicious mind about these ministers, um, it sounds to me like a land grab in the making. It is a plan for a land grab. I agree with you. Um, and do you know this business of fertilizers, it's 42,000 rupees. How on earth can they? I know a farmer in Hambantota, he simply doesn't have the money. He, and he says it's not available. If he can get it, it's going to be 42,000. How do you get the price down? How do you make it affordable? Now, we export teas yeah. to Middle Eastern countries. In return, we should get fertilizers and we have an untapped resource I don't know whether you would agree with me that's water hmm. millions and billions of gallons of water is joining the sea along the rivers hmm. the water is an essential commodity to all of us and in the Middle East they import water not only for drinking purpose but also for irrigation but you know, you, you're so absolutely right about uh, water. But I want to mention this very quickly just before we end. Officials, officialdom at the CB and other ministries, the relevant line ministries, have stymied the completion of the Umayyah war project. And that is an absolute crime. So, we, you know, no point blaming ministers the whole time. Officials are utterly responsible for the incomplete work at the Umaya project. You're right, corrupt officials, they don't want us to progress in certain ways. And there are some more uh, hydropower uh, projects could be developed in this country, but they, some officials prefer to buy 
electricity from private uh, because they're companies. obviously getting paid off oh my god massive amounts and about water if we can barter water to oil in the Middle Eastern countries I think we can make a very big impact in our economy let's hope that somebody who's listening to this will explore that possibility Dr. Hema Kumara Nani Akara thank you very much for being on Newsline Live we've much enjoyed having you thank you very much for having me here and enjoyed this discussion very much thank you very much thank you and there you go putting the people first news first and this is Newsline we've come to the end of this program today thank you for your questions thank you for your viewership and it's now time for the primetime news take care good night and God bless you all.